You're watching Channel Z, the world's leading zombie apocalypse channel. Broadcasting live from Studio Z. Makes me act the way I do. And hello, welcome to the Dr. Dr. Z. Uh, for this Friday, October 16th edition on Channel Z, part of the 2020 Zombie Apocalypse Medicine Meeting. As always, I'll be with you for the next half an hour. Uh, and in the before times, I was Joe Alcock. Uh, with you today, I am El Doctor Z. And I am delighted uh, to be joined today by, we have a tactical zombie medicine expert and resuscitationist. We have Dr. Drew with us today. Uh, again, in the before times, Dr. Drew and I were colleagues working at the university together. Again, back when there was a university, sadly. Now, during the uh, during after the event, there there is not. So here we are dealing with uh, dealing with with stuff. Today's episode is on brain hijacking and how we can be parasitized and taken over by other biological entities. And we assume that this ongoing zombie zombification organism is either a prion, like we discussed in a previous Dr. Z, maybe a virus, something like rabies, maybe some combination of, of both, or it could be something that's never been described before. Um, but Dr. Drew, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on where, where you are. Yeah. So uh, Joe, good to know you're still uh, holding in there, uh, L. Dr. Z. And, uh, you know, we are, uh, we're close haven't been able to make contact in these after times with after the event. And so, uh, like, uh, like L Dr. Z said, so, uh, previous times worked in emergency medicine and it's also did some, some tactical medicine work. So, uh, those have proven to be very beneficial skills to have in these trying times. And, uh, I'm glad that we still have maybe a little bit of a discussion and see if some things that we can maybe talk on today that'll help some people in these really difficult times. Yeah, and just to remind the audience, if you would like to send us a comment, send us a question, uh, we are we are here for you. So again, back to brain hijacking. Dr. Drew does look very prepared. Um, he can he can fight off all manner of uh, parasites, zombies, creatures. Just to give you an example of of an, a, a parasite that takes over your body, uh, let me show you this creature. Y'all can see this. This is Cymothoa. Exigua. It is an isopod. It's basically a pill bug in the ocean. But this particular isopod lives and takes over the tongue organ of a fish. So it replaces the tongue of a fish and it does all the work of a tongue. It delivers food to the fish's stomach, but it takes a little bit of food in the process. Um, and we might think of this, this example of hijacking, hijacking of a single organ, in this case the tongue, as being something which is you know, not quite so bad. Maybe this is, you know, you can you can live without with an with an organism that does all the things that your tongue does, right? And and that that animal is still a fish, right? It still kind of has agency. It still is laying eggs, doing its thing. And as far as we know, that particular isopod doesn't shorten the life of uh, its host, um, at least not for, not by much. But you know, Doctor Z, it sure is ugly, isn't it? It is ugly. Let, let's show it again. I mean, that's there a terrible is. look. At, like, like, thank you. Know, you. That was in your mouth. <laughs> if you opened up your mouth, we saw that it, we'd have a hard time not uh, not taking some some kind of action against you for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And so here we have a comment from Lee: "Living its best fish life, just no tongue." That's right. Um, yeah. Well, so mostly it's, it's got two. It's got two tongues now, right? I mean, it has the. Parasite I guess technically tongue. it does. Technically. technically it does. But it's then a better it's a, fish life. Yeah, but just from a philosophical uh, idea, we can imagine if a parasite took over my left arm and did all the function of a left arm, and, and I couldn't really tell the difference, then would that be a problem for me? Maybe not, right? But you wouldn't, you know, you'd have a zombie arm only, realistically. You would. Aha, uh -huh. tuna salad, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a comment there from Neil Smith. Thank you, thank you for uh, commenting there. Um, you know, Baba Brinkman, he's, uh, he has come up with Ballad of a Zombie, uh, specifically for this conference, the Zombie Apocalypse Medicine Meeting 2020. Um, uh, he did some part of the world premiere was last night. 
Uh, there'll, there'll be more uh, from Baba, I think, in the remainder of this conference. Uh, but he, he gave some examples of some crazy parasites that take over even more than just a tongue. So there, you can see the crab there, uh, that's Sacculina. It takes over the reproductive organs of a crab and does all the reproducing for the crab. That may be, from an evolutionary standpoint, just as bad as being dead, uh, perhaps. Um, but then there's some other ones that take over the whole nervous system. We got Ophiocordyceps, that's the fungus invading the brain of the ant, totally hijacks that brain's neural network and makes the ant do its bidding. It's no longer an ant at all. So I think that's very different from our fish example. And then we got the jewel wasp, um, taking over the brain of a cockroach. And then we have this crazy pulsating eyeball parasite that invades snails. That's Leucochloridium sacculina. Um, again, these are some pretty crazy parasites. You gotta love this art that, uh, that Baba Brinkman managed to, um, I don't believe he drew this himself, but he, uh, he had some, uh, did some amazing work with an artist to bring this, both the, the, the rap, uh, Ballad of a Zombie and the artwork, both. Indeed. And what do we have here from Ilana Rain? Dr. Zed always pushing through what nauseates non doctors. Hey, this is biology. Come on. We can, yeah, this, this so, is stuff. You know, I mean, you if know, you we, were, uh, I think Ilana was there yesterday. I mean, the brains were definitely more nauseating than any of the stuff we've just gone through right now. That's true. But to, to your point, we've done uh, tongue replacing parasites. Let's show that again. Hmm? We've done pulsating eyeball parasites. We've done eyeball enucleation. We did that yesterday. I uh, talked about mm. that. Uh, as yeah. well as brains, brains that cause a spongiform encephalopathy. But you know what? Hey, get back to our situation. You, you look a little stressed, I have to say. Um, and, and we did get a report earlier from Larry and Stephen, um, and they seemed pretty agitated. Matter of fact, Stephen didn't look, didn't look himself. He looked a little, little sick. Um, I believe they're, they, could, they could really be in, in some trouble. Um, we're not sure if, if whatever's going on in their part of the world is happening here in New Mexico. Um, but I see that you've taken some defensive actions. So we're going to yeah. move, move from biology and talk about personal protection for the remainder of this talk, I think. Oh, Baba, yeah. Baba oh, is uh, helping us out. Um, the illustrator's name. We've got to give credit where credit is due. Noel yeah. Planet. He's done most of his album covers since 2010. Uh, a very fine and talented artist. Thank you for that, Baba. And, and I like to say, so shout out from, from Baba. So those of you that are still around, make sure you go to Noel's work and look, if, if you make it through these after times, um, you should, artwork is hard to come by. Yeah, let's, let's bring uh, but, that up one more time. Yeah. Yeah, we could spend all day looking at that, but that, that could distract us from more pressing events. Yeah. yeah, so I think Ilana brought something mm. up about, you know, Larry and Steve and some really big concerns. And, uh, Dr. Dr. Zed, I, I might look like I have uh, maybe overstepped the needs, but I, I really wanted to point out is that, you know, if you think that you need to start rapidly looking for ways to defend yourselves and you haven't thought it through, it's probably too late, right? Much mm. like the uh, fish with yeah. the uh, parasitic tongue. Um, you got to prepare. You got to prepare. You got to, right? I mean, this, you haven't gone to look for this. It's hard to find it in the dark when you need it. All right, so getting back to our philosophical question of when does a zombie become a zombie? Do we have a moral license to hurt or even kill the undead? Is that something that we can do? I have to tell you, Dr. Drew, I'm a little uncomfortable. I don't, I don't like guns, you know? I've got, I do have my trekking pole. We talked about this, using this as a weapon yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And yeah. Daryl, Dario talked about using a cane. Um, yep. I've, I've gone, I've taken an extra step. I went out, I bought, I bought this thing. I got this taser yep. device using that, electricity. That, uh, yeah, that one shot taser device. I think that's an uh -huh. important part to, uh, right. to kind of bring up. And, uh, in, and in, in our line of work, we use electricity yeah. sometimes to bring people back from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. So, and true. and it, it got a positive benefit in certain medical situations, yeah. uh, much like your tranquilizing dart. However, hmm. uh, do you can tranquilize something that's not alive anymore? Well, I, I mean, don't know. I mean, that's a good question. Do they have a functional peripheral nerve that would conduct electricity through a muscle and cause uh, muscle tetany? That's that um, rigidity and muscle contraction that would make it make the zombie fall over. I don't know. Cor I don't know. And I will have to say that I will gladly let you be the first person to tell us if it works. Hmm. But can you video it and live stream it so we can see? Because I'd like to have that uh, to reference 
if if you know we don't have El Doctor Z anymore after the the first sure. attempt. If you know, so anyway. Well, like I said, we there are zombies in various stages of zombification. Some some might be more of just like the tongue parasite, where they retain their human characteristics. Um, but I think it like like we saw from that video that uh, that Larry um, showed briefly. Um, it looked like there was an attack at a gas station, and the, the victim yeah. uh, didn't really see it coming. Uh, it looked it looked lethal to me. I think that there there was uh, some some cannibalism, some consum consumption going on. And maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe my pacifist approach wouldn't work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if I can talk down the zombie. I, I'm going to see if I can I reason with a zombie. I worry about you, Dr. Z. I mean, because they, right, by definition, so for instance, let's take the, we talked about the parasitic fungus, fungi that takes over the ant's central nervous system. It's mm -hmm. not an ant anymore. And there's really nothing to, um, that there's nothing left to really reason with. That's why we have collapse and we have all of the issues associated with it in these after times. That's a good um, point. So we I did have I, a comment wonder, from a, from an audience member about saying that maybe a taser will work. I'm willing to give it a try, but you have some other things you want to show us. I'm going to actually I do, bring I do. you on full screen so you can tell okay. us kind of what you're all about here. So, and I think one of the things in terms of making yourself prepared. So we're going to, we're going to cover the gambit here because I know a lot of you, you know, a lot of the work that I did in the uh, in the four times um, and some of the training and the equipment, not something that a lot of people are have accessible. But we're going to walk our way through some of the some of the uh, like, shall we say, um, opportunity uh, weapons that probably all of you have around the house. And we're going to talk about some of the positive benefits like Joe, uh, I should say, Dr. Zed was bringing up about, you know, maybe the taser um, or even his blow dart. But I would I would. I would caution anybody to make sure that we've thought through kind of what the end result is. And if we're trying to, to in, if we're trying to talk a zombie down, as Dr. Zed thinks that he'd like to do, and you feel like that's an option, I would do it behind something that the zombie can't get through until you know it's going to work. Um, but things that, well, you know, like Dr. Zed, what is it exactly that we want to really do to stop a zombie? Well, I think we need to slow them down, incapacitate them. Yeah. Um, under yeah. certain circumstances, it might be best to uh, return them to a more dead rather than undead state. Um, I, which I like to judging I from like, certain zombie movies. I think we might be that if you take out the head, because zombies still have to have some kind of functioning, you know, central nervous something. It's not really a brain at that point, right? Yeah, but that's the perfect point. It's it's more. I think the central nervous system conducts, which is which is really right. I mean, there's a reason that I have this helmet, which gives my head more protection and my brain more protection inside my skull. But let's take this off. Oh, mm -hmm. and I come back here. So even without helmet, we've got a really strong protective skull around our brain. It's set up that way to, as, as Dr. Zed and I in the before times had to deal with you know, bad head injuries. It's hard mm -hmm. to crack this thing open. And if you're trying to destroy the brain and the brain stem of an organism, of a zombie, as the case may be, you have to think that kind of through. And a lot of a lot of the, the information, a lot of the stuff that we've got out there about what's the best way to do that from a zombie standpoint, right? People, so let's, you know, I'm, I'm curious, those of you that are online, what do you think a good way to destroy a zombie brain? One, uh, mm. Don't we need a Neil? That's a perfect yes. If we could get a live one, by live one we mean zombie that's actually still moving around, uh, we could conduct some some experience come in, some experience experiments on it. But right now, unless uh, unless while I'm talking, or while Doctor Zed's talking, one run wanders in. We're going to have to go with what we know. And so I'm going to let's start with something simple like I don't know a crowbar. So. So a crowbar, lots of people got crowbars or any other, you know, big piece of pipe or something around sitting around the house. But what's the what's the benefit of this? Well, one, there are lots of people can find pipes and lots of people can buy, find crowbars. But smash it. Uh, Lana, you are correct. The problem with smashing it is have any of y'all ever smashed open a skull? <laughs> No, no. I hope I hope the Probably. answer is no. I hope the, I answer, hope the is no. answer. I I hope the answer is no. 
But let me just, you know, the good Dr. Zed and I can attest to the fact that even well-placed crowbar blows um, are still surprisingly uh, unable to puncture in a in a an organized and sufficient manner a skull to completely destroy the brain and the brainstem. Uh, I think Liz Grumbach pointing out a heavy frying pan, yes, but that's even worse because there's a couple of reasons that both the crowbar and the heavy frying pan aren't going to be the lid of the toilet tank, aka zombie. And sure, Carlo, but again, you got to be really close. And you hope, oh, perfect. We'll get to that, the ax, Carlo. We'll get the ax as a penetrating edge. You set it up perfectly. So blunt uh, bludgeon, uh, d- you know, instrument like a crowbar or a piece of pipe. But this is as far away as I can be, right? If you think about this, I'm really close to a zombie. That's okay if there's one zombie. Or Dr. Zed, what about how fast the zombie moves? Hmm. Have you thought well, about I, that, people? I don't know if we understand from the current uh, event whether we're dealing with a fast or a slow zombie um, scenario. And, and by the time you find out that they're fast and lots of them, it's too late. So, right. You know, I, I just so, have one more point. One more point about yeah. this. Uh, trying to you know get to because we also don't know which part of the brain is responsible for the movement of the zombie. Mm. Um, we, th- we think the frontal lobe is pretty much shot. Right. They don't have. They're, yep. They yeah. are. Yeah. They want to eat we everything. Know. They have we no need no, e- no executive function. You don't have to worry yeah. about your personality, your disinhibitions, and all that stuff. That's not a thing. <laughs> and What's yes, a- uh, yes, Lee, I am. Uh, I am sipping. Uh, it it might impair my response time, but it will lower my inhibitions to be able to uh, accomplish appropriately the task at hand in these terrible, awful times. Mm. Shout out to our folks at Lacumbre. They make delicious, wet hop hazy IPAs. So, even during even during the apocalypse. Well, this is a this is a, a closely guarded stash. So ah, okay. If you can get here, I'll give you one. Otherwise, if you don't know where here is, I'm sorry. <laughs> so back to uh yeah, Carlo, you are on the money today, my friend. Carlo mainly talk about spears. We'll get to that uh in a second. But things that you have to get close to, and as uh Dr. Zed pointed out, we don't know exactly how much of the brain. We need to destroy. We're pretty sure that it's not the the executive function frontal lobes that make us human and give us our personality. So that being the case, you got to get all of it, and you got to at least the brain much, stem. At least I believe, the brain uh, stem. In the before times, uh, Stephen Schlossman wrote about the uh, brain stem as being the part that is responsible for zombie zombification. Correct, and we're using the things that we know from the before times. So. Mm-hmm. Folks, that's not like sitting out here in the periphery, deep, heavily protected. Um, and is there a way, Liz, to test and make sure it's a zombie and not some sick human? Well, zom- uh, yes, exactly. Zombies are just sick humans. So if you're not sure, you probably should assume they're a zombie in the aftertime. So pipes, crowbars, let's put these aside because <laughs> honestly – These are going to be last ditch. This is all I got left. Uh, Same thing, like, right, if all I got is this little thing here, well, um, then uh, I'm probably want to drink my last wet hops hazy IPA and go out in a place for it. But we're going to put these down. So Carlos brought up an uh, an idea. So axes, right, which I have one happen to have right here. Uh, A brush hook for those of you that do farm work. Um, but the thing with these, uh, oh, one of my main Z kill skills, medieval combat. Yep, Dungeon and Dragons. However, we'll get to that in a second. Carlo, you couldn't, you're setting this up too well. So these devices give you a little bit more handoff. They've got a little bit more penetration. Has anybody ever stuck this into uh, a really thick piece of wood or, I don't know, stump? Anyone? Anyone? Have you tried to pull that out quickly? and then repeat mm. that over and over again, therein lies the deficit and the um, the in- unfortunate uh, things with brush hooks and splitting wedges and axes is that once lodged in skull to hopefully incapacitated, completely, newly, completely dead zombie, you still got to remove it and do it again. And we won't even go into the fast versus slow, but they have it, right? 
I think you can all put the, uh, the dots together here, connect them and say that if this is stuck in the skull of the zombie that you've just done capacitated, and yet his zombie friend is still coming at you, um, they don't work well. And, you know, Dr. Zed, I, I, I appreciate and I really love the idea about the blow dart, but what are we, the blow darts are for tranquilizing things that are alive. And I'm not so sure that that's going to work. And what about the taser? Uh, the taser is a, also a one-shot thing, and it actually has to have neuroconductive tetany that we're not sure is going to work. And I just, I'm really worried about you doing that. And uh, we getting to watch your downfall. Right. I see a lot of concerns from the audience about uh, you know, people either physically attracted to zombies um yeah zombies. You know, there's, Neil, there's, there's, I, there's, I don't this, know. there's this thread going through about people worried about the rights of zombies uh yeah you know, I, I don't know i mean have we have we heard from the zombie lobbyists yet uh, you know sooner or later yeah okay but again right. for the point of our conversation we're going to get back to our if we just think the zombies kind of like this fish parasite just to yep. show this one more time then, uh, then, then, yeah, we'll we'll talk this one down. We're not going to probably try to decapitate this. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. And, and I think I think it's reasonable. Like using the 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 fish parasitic tongue organism, is mm-hmm. there any any uh, harm to the fish? Uh, the fish might actually have to do less work, right? And the yeah. parasites just along the ride taking a little bit of benefit for for that workload that it's off that it's doing mm-hmm. for the fish. So I would say that that's is it more of a that's a, a, a post symbiont that it is a, a zombie, wouldn't you say? Well, I think it's a parasite, um, but it really does get to the issue of, you know, if you happen to be born without a tongue and you came across that parasite, that could be quite useful. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Indeed. But hey, I'm 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 taking away from uh, your show here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna. Well, that's get okay. Back no. to, you, I mean, sorry. yeah. So so you know something else. What else do people have laying around? I guess you know if you if you only had I don't know. Like a spade shovel. It's kind of like this brush hook. But again, it's a lot of work if you really have to use it to defend yourself from a true zombie attack. And this is a one-off zombie attack thing. I mean, like you hope it's a one slow zombie. And if there's a like a zombie horde, um, then what are you going to do? And they don't really work well because uh, it takes a lot of energy. Anybody ever dug a ditch recently with a spade shovel? Right, twenty-two pounds of dirt at a time. That's uh, I can do that for very long. And even with my liquid courage, Lana, uh, then I'm gonna run out of I'm gonna run out of options. Um, so what do you think's next, Doctor Zed? What do we? What else to have people laying have laying around? Well, like I said, I, I come from that pacifist tradition. I don't. Uh, I, I'm, don't trying, in fire I'm trying, arms. brother. I'm trying. I'm trying. Arms. I'm trying to help you. Like we're working our way up here. I mean, there's lots of right. things that will take its place. So just yesterday, when we were uh, talking about zombies and brains and all types of stuff, somebody brought a great point about medieval weapons. And I think Carlo brought them up as well, is that Dungeons and Dragons and some of the medieval weapons that might actually make a pretty good stand, depending on all things equal, uh, the zombie physiology, if you will. And so crossbows and or longbows well, gun, you know, Neil, guns might not be the answer, but they're they're certainly something that we should consider in the zombie apocalypse because uh, if if it's you or the zombie and uh, all you've got is a gun and nothing else seems to be working, I would just put out there is that you you probably should at least have a consideration for um, your own self preservation in these after times. Sure. But uh, we talked about crossbows. To your yesterday. point, though, crossbows, trebuchets. Uh, Boiling sand, boiling, you know, you boiling oil set up. on fire. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we talked about crossbows yesterday and uh, trebuchets and uh, siege weapons. I, you know, Joe, I, I would have to say that. Um, I mean, if you've if you've gone to the point to create one and set it up, it's not easy to move. Uh, the crossbows for sure, the trebuchets and other slingshots and siege type weapons. Right. Um, might make work great, great work, but how you're going to uh, how you going to move that when you when your position gets overrun? I don't have the answer. A fast acting oh. drug that can be injected with my blow dart. <laughs> yeah, but Alana, so that is a great question, and, and Doctor Zed and I go about talk about this over and over again. 
we don't know without uh and I, I can't remember who brought it up but if we had one to experiment on if we had a live zombie i believe that was neil smith again yeah then yeah. then we might be able to say yes we could use some of the medications that uh go into our in our, in our last go bags yeah. but um but I as you know dr drew when we're trying to resuscitate someone who is again functionally dead if not legally dead uh, if they don't have a um <laughs> If they don't have any kind of circulation, we can't get the drug to where it needs to go. Correct. Right. Yep. So if it's not easily dispersed. And so that's the thing. So let's, what about, how do people feel about chainsaws? Hmm. Okay. What do you think? What do you think, Joe? Dr. Uh, again, you gotta have to get pretty close to the, uh, to the organism. It could put you at risk. It could put you at risk. It's certainly- a lot of flying gore. There'd be a lot of flying gore, which is why it's important to have things like helmets, right? Mm -hmm. Helmets are important. Yeah. Very certain eye pro. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to worry so much about ear protection in the aftertimes uh, wow. from hearing standpoint. But yep. this would be a great tool. Uh, the longer the chainsaw bar, the better you're going to be. Um, and I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discourage you. Has anybody got a pole saw in terms of trimming and uh, fruit trees or whatnot? I run an, uh, and they. To, uh, too cumbersome. Ewan, I, 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 you're right, but I'm really looking. So what? Let me ask you, Ewan. Would you rather? Uh, and you are indeed correct, Zanab. Is that they are loud, and so you there's a trade-off. Uh, I don't know if I'd want a battery-powered chainsaw unless I have Joe's house with a, right. a huge solar, solar array. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. Well, we only have maybe two or three more minutes to kind of yeah. wrap this up before we get on to the next thing. Um, so if what's what's your what's your choice then? If you you kind of brought some things up. So I got to tell you, I doctor doctor said my choice would likely be from a ballistic standpoint the most ubiquitous available uh, uh, option that would give me some standoff, and it's probably going to be a rifle, uh, and it's going to be a rifle that's one of the two most common rounds in the entire world. So there's either the two two three or the AK-47 uh, rifle rounds, and those two bullets and those two platforms are everywhere. And in the aftertimes, if you look, and you don't have to look very hard, there's available resources out there that will probably help, and it'll give you the opportunity to survive till tomorrow and to keep yourself and the people around you safe. How do you, you talk down a zombie? You know, I, uh, we, I think I, that others it brought this up, you know, you offer it some, it, the, the, got the hierarchy of needs. You offered a, a hamburger, maybe even a little pate with a little bit of brain like we had yesterday. Athena, you offer it someone else. <laughs> well, you know, I hear some scrabbling outside. Things are, things are getting a little scary out here. I will go outside and try my, uh, my uh, motivational interviewing technique with a zombie. Um, we'll see how that goes. You use your, your technique, Dr. Drew. We'll see who survives this. Dr. Um, Zed, please make sure you live it, and I appreciate it, and you stay safe out there. Yeah. You too. All right. So for Dr. Zed, uh, signing off, and be safe, folks. I know it's crazy, but it seems so logical. I can't deny that there is something supernatural with you. It makes me happy when